With the recent changes to CentOS, many are curious about the current state and role of Fedora Linux in the Red Hat ecosystem. Today I'll attempt to answer this question. In one of my recent videos, I talked about the fate of the traditional CentOS Linux and I got a comment on that video asking about what happened to Fedora. And I realized that some viewers might like a video about this topic. So thank you for bringing this up. Just to make it clear upfront, Fedora Linux is still alive and kicking. It remains an active and popular Linux distribution, sponsored by Red Hat, and it serves as the upstream source for the Red Hat Enterprise, blah, 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 Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So from now on, I'm just gonna call it Red Hat EL because it's a mouthful to say. But what does it mean to be the upstream source for the Red Hat EL? Simply put, Fedora acts as the testing ground or development environment where new features, updates, and improvements are first introduced and then tested before being included in the final release of the Red Hat EL. But you might be wondering, where does the CentOS fit in? With the introduction of the CentOS stream, CentOS now sits between Fedora and Red Hat EL in the development and release process. Let's break down their roles. You can think of Fedora as experimental kitchen in a sense. Developers try out new recipes, features, and updates to see how they work. So it's perfect for developers, enthusiasts, and users who love working with new technologies and contribute to open source projects. Now, CentOS Stream acts as a continuous preview of the next minor release of the Red Hat EL. And that kitchen analogy, this is like an intermediate kitchen, where the recipes are refined based on the feedback before they are finalized. CentOS Stream targets enterprises and businesses, often used in service and production environments, unlike Fedora, which is more targeted for the individual users. But once the recipes are perfected in Fedora and refined in the CentOS stream, they make it to the official menu of the high-end restaurant, which we call Red Hat EL, the polished, stable, and reliable operating system used by businesses and enterprises. But wait, where does the abandoned traditional CentOS Linux fits in in this picture? Before the introduction of the CentOS stream, we had the traditional CentOS Linux a stable, community-supported Linux distribution that closely followed Red Hat EL releases, but without introducing new features and updates independently. It had very minimal changes to it throughout the releases, and that's what many users liked about it. Now that it has been ditched, the positioning is like this, so let's recap this. We have Fedora, which is the first stage, feature introduction. Then there's CentOS Stream, intermediate stage, refining and testing features. And finally, Red Hat Enterprise. Linux final, stable, enterprise-ready product. So yes, Fedora is still there, thriving with regular releases about every six months or so, and currently the latest release is Fedora 40, which was released in April 2024, I believe, and it is available for the download um, on Fedora project website. One standout improvement in the Fedora 40 release that caught my eye is the inclusion of the PyTorch support package, which is currently supporting only CPU usage, but with the plans to expand the support to the GPU usage as well as the acceleration support for the AMD graphic cards. I'm really looking forward to the future release of Fedora that will include GPU support because this is something I use a lot in my research. In fact, my workstation currently also runs Fedora, but inside the virtual machine, uh, which I might later change to the main operating system. So I'm still thinking about this, but this question is not for now, but for later. And I'll sure update you guys. So it will be interesting for me to hear how many of you guys use Fedora and for which purposes, uh, and as well as hear some words of wisdom from you and any advice uh, you might have. If you found this video helpful, please like and consider subscribing for more Linux conversations like this, more machine learning related videos, and general graduate physics student life type of videos. Thanks for watching and see you around.